Welcome to American Lutheran Church in Sun City, Arizona. Thank you for joining us for this worship time, a time to give thanks to God. The theme for today is cascading generosity, cascading God's blessings to each and every one of us. And we open ourselves to all the opportunities with all the amazing gifts that we have been given. We are allowed to participate in generating new ministry for the sake of the gospel. I ask you to join me as you listen to the words of praise, as we sing meaningful words of a song, which is a song that talks about this difficult time, knowing of God's tremendous love and care. I give thanks for your involvement in worship and ask God, bless this time together. Amen. Romans 9 begins a new section in Paul's letter in which he will deal with the place of Israel in God's saving plan. He opens by highlighting how Israel's heritage and legacy include being God's children, having God's covenants, being given God's law, participating in worship of God, and receiving divine promises. We read from Romans 9, 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. 
For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises to them that belong the patriarchs. And from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is from Psalm 145, selected verses read responsibly. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, Lord, you are are good good to all, all, and your your compassion compassion is over all your your works. The Lord upholds those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and and you give them them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You You are are righteous in in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. Our gospel for today is from St. Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 13 through 21. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You, give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the grace of God fulfill every dream and ambition you have in this wonderful body of Christ, the church, for this time and this place. Cascading generosity is a short phrase, but it is a way that God invites us into this wonderful life of being generous. Many of us want to see what the risk is before we get involved, and we often look from our own perspective I have little, I have not enough, I don't have enough time, or I need to hold on to things to make sure that I'm protecting my interest. And certainly those are reasonable concerns, but the concern that God has is that we are lifted out of that narrow, narrow perspective and into a perspective of God that there is great abundance when we are gathered together, when God allows this generosity to cascade from us, from God to us, to other people. It's an exciting, exciting mission to be part of the generosity of God, generating new ministry in Christ's name. The psalm that we had for today speaks of a deep intimacy with the Lord. Anytime we talk about generosity without talking about the Lord, it's really just fundraising. And fundraising is important for organizations to uh, obviously have funds in which to move, but This movement of God is a invitation to grow deeper in faith. Psalm 145 says it this way at the opening line, 
the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. That is a pivotal statement. The Lord is full. There is nothing lacking in God's grace and his love and concern for us. There is no shortage. That's the starting position with the love of God. There is no shortage of God's grace and compassion. Slow to anger and abounding, a beautiful generosity word, abounding in steadfast love. And the psalmist then speaks of Lord and the Lord, does that transition, but then gets to the intimate language. Here again, you open wide your hand. You are righteous in all your ways. You are near to all. You fulfill the desire of those and you watch over those. Statements of God's amazing character, that is a foundational piece of generosity to understand the amazing, abounding grace and the compassion of our Lord. And then this invitation of response, my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. What a beautiful statement for you and I. So the psalm sets that abundance of God, the fullness of God, as our invitation for cascading generosity. Then the generosity of God is in the Romans text itself. It speaks of Paul's love for the Jewish people and an invitation for our own love and that generosity that God has shared. Yes, we disagree upon the Messiah, but hear about all the abundance of God's grace for the people of Israel, their adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, the promises, the patriarchs, And to them then comes the Messiah who is over all. God's promises are true. And that's a foundational aspect of life. I ask for God's continued inbreaking for people of all faith to come to this knowledge, the abundance of love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And goes to the gospel text itself. It's an interesting time. Jesus is not without need for rest and recovery and grief as John the Baptist his own cousin is beheaded and that beheading is a tragic story of scarcity it has to do with Herod Herod the great son who marries he divorces and then marries another woman and that woman has a daughter Salome and during a drunken fest uh, the Herod the king says What can I do for you? I'll give you anything that you ask. He was thinking even half his kingdom, that infatuation, that shallowness that he brought forward in his drunken stupor. And guided by her mother, Sloan says, bring me the head of John the Baptist. And in that drunken request is the death of a man so dear. That is the opposite of generosity. That is scarcity thinking at its worst. As Jesus is mourning and taking time away, for the depth of loss. Here come people seeking the Lord. They need his compassion. And there he is, again, full of compassion and healing. And this is our Lord. It's always interesting to me about the scriptures themselves and speaking about how many people were there. This patriarchal view of 5,000 men besides women and children. Obviously, these are precious people, well over 5,000 families. Families gathered to hear the good news of God's love, well over 5,000 people. And this deserted place, no stores, in a way a very impromptu uh, gathering of people, a, a massive outpouring of people, but no vendors, and many people probably didn't even pack a lunch. The disciples see scarcity. Time to get them out of here. We only have a little bit for ourselves. Send them away, Lord. And this amazing invitation, it's an invitation that we have for our life, is that we do not need to send them away. You, give them something to eat. You, me, us. This amazing individual response and yet in communal joy. It is a deeply personal thing, this invitation to be generous. But it's not private. It is all of us enjoying this opportunity and maybe learning in trusting the Lord, the character of the Lord, that there is no shortage and coming forward. So the years ago when I was back in corporate life, there was a way of saying this, which was asset-based. 
asset-based planning, which is start with all the things that you already have. Don't start with scarcity. Don't start with those things that you don't have. Start with what the good Lord, maybe wasn't always that religious, but start with what you have. And it was very inclusive in its understanding. It wasn't just physical assets like building or equipment. It it's began with the realization of all the precious people in the organization, including the precious customers. So when you take a church and translate it into a more powerful understanding of God's graciousness, is that we are overwhelmed by the abundance of the Lord. We have wonderful members here. We have a beautiful community in which to serve. We have a fantastic synod in which we're partnered with many other congregations and over 10,000 congregations throughout this United States and double, triple, quadruple that throughout the whole world. We are part of a generosity movement, but it comes with that risk to take a step forward in faith. You give them something to eat and they did anything but asset-based planning. They said, we have nothing here, but I enjoy, I take it a little bit slower. We have nothing here, that's the starting position. It's like negotiating position. And I encourage you and I, we don't need to start there. We don't need to use that. Lord, I have nothing to give. Well, maybe a few things. We don't need to start there. We have tremendous things in which to offer. Our time, our talents, our treasures, our experiences, our deep uh, vocational call to help each of us in a different way and yet combine together in this graciousness of God. And I love the way that this generosity cascades. Certainly miraculous, but just understand that process. It motivates me to share this with you is that bring them here to me. That is a powerful statement. Before releasing, bring them before the Lord for that full blessing. In Jesus' name, we do these things. Not for our own personal aggrandizement, I can't even say the word, but for our own personal glory. We are not doing it for that. We are doing it for the Lord's work. Bring them here to me. And then he looks to heaven, blesses, and breaks or releases and as this cascades out, you know, I understand the miracle. The miracle, beyond a cornucopia of thanksgiving, this miracle of God's abundance flowing through Christ through others. And I also know that people's hearts are touched when they see each person stepping forward and also sharing what they have, a release of this entire congregation gathered in an impromptu manner, but gathered and each one responding and sharing with another what a beautiful description of cascading generosity. It is a time for us to deeply consider the generosity of our Lord and to always start there, the tremendous foundation that we have in life. And as we are called forward, you'll be receiving this uh, week through email uh, uh, the statement of giving through the first half of the year. I just give thanks to God for all the emails that are going out. I pray that it stimulates you, not as a bill or as a, oh gosh, a reminder, but as a statement of God's blessing upon your life. We are holding our own as a congregation. We are holding our own expenses matching revenue. And that is amazing, even in the midst of not gathering for worship. But we are not speaking of scarcity. We're speaking of this technology and the hope and the dream of reuniting for public worship. We know of God's abundant love and we work together for the sake of the gospel. So brothers and sisters, this is a miracle. It's called generosity. It starts from a miraculous God who is full of abundance and compassion for you and I and it cascades to you and I to release. So I'll end with a little joke. It's not a Sven and Oli joke, it's just another little joke about the baptismal covenant. So it kind of goes this way, which is in missionary work, when you uh, baptize people and bring them underneath the water, many uh, cultures want to hold something away from that and so the analogy is for a warring tribe is that sure you may dip the warrior under the water but he'll keep his spear out to keep that as protection here in America the joke would be as we go under the water of baptism we're going to take our billfold and hold that out of the water because that's where we rely upon our trust 
it may be a, a silly joke, but it, it really is a way to say that all of this is within God's care. All of this is part of the assets of God's great love for this world, using us to be part of his mission. What a wonderful experience. What an opportunity. So I invite you to understand God's grace and abundance, bringing our gifts to God and releasing them together. What a beautiful generosity. Lord, let it cascade over us. Amen. prayers today start with our offertory prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possession, signs of your gracious love. Receive then for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Dear Lord, you take resources that appear to be meager, but you bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Replenish groundwater supplies, provide needed rains in places of drought, and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you, and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation a welcoming heart that our words and actions in our homes and in community may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known, especially Daniel Kallenbach and Bev Jensen and Don Garverick. Remember these precious saints, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us, us our, our trespasses, trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taking the gifts of Jesus, allowing the Lord to bless them, allows a cascading generosity. We are called, brothers and sisters, to this ministry, to take what we have, take it to the Lord, to have it blessed, and then to take it and share. All is within God's abundance. The assets that we possess are so beautiful. Our time, our talents, our treasures, together we are called forward in ministry. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And may his countenance be with you so that you know you are loved in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.